to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi-Fi's, welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And click the bell for notifications of when I upload new content and when I go live. All right, today we are going to be talking about dating gentrification. And it is just what it sounds like. If you have been around any major city these days, you already know what gentrification is. So I don't feel like I need to Merriam-Webster dictionary define it for you. But we are watching the historic almost high prices of housing. And this has always been a commodity that consumes the largest parts of our income, but it has truly gotten out of hand. Evidence today of what many see as a Housing rental crisis in this country, rents hitting a record high in July for the 17th consecutive month. And if you have been watching it, you see that some of the lowest income, rundown, disenfranchised, <laughs> abandoned, just destitute areas of town are now the ones that are worth the most money. I am a Charlotte native and just maybe 10 years ago, if you told someone you lived in first ward, if you told someone you lived in fourth ward, you know, you lived anywhere, what we called downtown back then, people would be like, oh, do you need a ride? I mean, bus fare, do you need, do you, do you need a few dollars? Like <laughs> that was not even somewhere you would admit to people that you lived. And now that dirty, <laughs> broken down, run down areas of town have become the epicenter of the city. And I don't want to be as I have been accused of being a plight supremacist, because I'm noticing that a lot of people who are coming in these days to ally with black women are doing it from this place of like superiority, like I'm going to reach down my hand and pull you up, black woman. But we are surrounded on every side by people who are blaming us <laughs> for everything from the original sin, okay, to, you know, the Titanic sinking. Like, it just kind of never ends <laughs> with the amount of responsibility and accountability that we as Black women are expected to take for everything that's going on and not <laughs> going on in our community currently. But the same element of devaluing, taking all the value out of a thing in order to be able to come back in, get that same property at a discount, at a deep discount, and be able to use what actually is the inherent equity in that piece of property, that land, that building to build it back up to a premium. You know, these same plots and pieces of land, property, commercial, multifamily, single family homes <laughs> are being sold way above the market value when they've been bought at a deep discount. I mean, that right there, it takes, it takes a lot of investment in a piece of property in order to be able to turn it or flip it for profit. But to whatever extent that they put any type of work, any type of investment into these properties is profitable. And see, I'm not talking about us as black women as being this run down, run shackled inside of town. We're putting that investment in. We are the largest group of new entrepreneurs, small business owners. We are the most educated people group in this nation right now. 
I mean, other than Asians, but I digress. My point is, as far as America is concerned, we're the most employed. We're employed at 40% more than our other female counterparts. We're keeping pace with our male group closing the gender pay gap within our own community anyway. You know, we are lockstep in pace. And I just need you to know that that investment that you're making in yourself to get educated, start a business, be a homeowner, it's turning the tide. You may not be able to see it right now because I'm telling you, I'm in Greenville right now. And in Greenville, South Carolina, it sits right between Atlanta and Charlotte. And I'm watching what's happening there because it looks just like Charlotte maybe 10, 10 years ago. And you can drive into these, ooh, dilapidated neighborhoods, and you'll see these homes that look like they're getting ready to fall in over on themselves. And right beside it is a half a million dollar home. <laughs> Easy. Same plot of land, but these two houses are giving a whole different level of value off. So hold yourself up. Keep your value. I have a um, nephew who is a home renovator. You know, him and my niece, they're in the business of flipping houses. I actually got to get them on the podcast. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing. And we were talking about, you know, how he looks for potential properties. And he said, you know, I don't care how run down the house is. I don't care how dilapidated it is. If the bones are good, if it's got good bones in it, we can flip it for a profit. And black women, you've been told that you're bitter, you're angry, you are beyond repair. Look at you. You're black, you're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. But understand that the same people that ran these neighborhoods down to nothing, put no investment into their own community, saw no value in it, are the same people that get displaced when people who understand the inherent value Understand that these properties, even sitting abandoned, torn down, dilapidated, have value in them. They have enough value to be able to renovate them for the person who has that vision, who has that end goal of increasing the value of the thing. And they're getting it at such a deep discount (laughs) that all they do is shine up a couple of floors, put a coat of paint on it, sell it. 200% over the investment. So I'm just saying, know that you have value. Just know that there's nothing that a person who doesn't see value in you can do to take value from you. They don't even see it. How you gonna hate from outside the club? I don't see how you can hate from outside of the club. You can't even get in. And that's why it is important now more than ever for us to stay focused, for us to remain unplugged, unbothered, so that we can be unleashed. You see it? You see it? If you, if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments and I want to hear from you in the comments tell me black women black people what projects you're currently working on let me know what types of things are you investing in yourself to build your self-worth your self-confidence you know this year 2023 is going to be an awesome amazing year an amazing opportunity to get what we need done before this next election year. I mean, (laughs) rent due, bills due, baby shark doo doo to do. It's a lot going on, but this is probably gonna be one of the last opportunities for a while to get them cheap and stack them deep. So let me know. Let me know what you're working on in the comments. But until the next episode, you already know the drill. Classy just here. See you in the comments. You do right by me. Everything you even think about gonna fail.